Good evening. This is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public participation during the meeting, as indicated in the agenda. And upon request of the superintendent, the district shall make reasonable accommodation for a person who needs to be participating in the meeting. Sorry about that. Thanks, everyone. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to take a minute to share some of the amazing accomplishments that our students had over the summer. Uh, just as everyone's getting ready for the school year, we've got a number of students in the organization that were getting ready for school year, too. Uh, so I wanted to share a few of the tutoring opportunities that occurred this summer and how many of our students participated. Air reading. Uh, this is our second go around with air reading. It's actually a virtual reading, uh, virtual reading tutoring. That occurs. We have tutors from across the nation that provide reading support to our students in small groups. One to three of our kiddos, they use one of our Chromebooks, uh, and then from home, two to three times per week, they'll meet with their reading teacher for 30 minutes at a time. This is targeted to our kindergarten and sixth grade students. And this summer, we were able to support 75 students who went for nine weeks of reading throughout the summer. Uh, great feedback from the teachers that facilitate every week. They send us a feedback of all of our 75 kids, how they're performing, uh, things that they're working on. And then we were able to pass that along to families too. And great feedback from our families. We actually just our last session last week. Uh, we have to give the kids a week off before school resuming. But kids really love it. They love being able to participate in the reading support with kids they know from Dexter. And then they get to meet a new teacher who's there to support them. So it's really wonderful. Uh, this year, we also rolled out Varsity Tutors, which was the first for us. We never partnered with them before. Varsity Tutors offers some free opportunities for students from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. Uh, they're a really interesting organization that they have opportunities such as uh, if you want to prepare for your SAT, they have SAT prep courses. So if you just want to work on creative writing, they have a course for that. They offer asynchronous, so families can take it at their own pace. And they also offer synchronous learning opportunities throughout the summer as well. Uh, and I just talked to our contact over there. We had over 100 Dexter families and students participate over the summer. So we have a lot of students across the organization working on that thing. Uh, the one I'm most proud to talk to you about tonight, though, is one that is actually from uh, a Dexter student. So earlier this school year, I we couldn't have been more than a couple weeks in school. I had a young man email me just saying, I'm really interested in setting up some summer tutoring. And so it's me. Uh, so Connor Masterson and I started uh, chatting, and he kind of pitched his idea about what he wanted to do. And he was really interested in providing math tutoring every day over the summer for students in Dexter. I had to talk him back a little bit because I, I had to explain that you probably wanted a summer as well, Connor. Uh, so we settled on four days a week, and we settled on about an hour and a half a day. Uh, and even that, he really wanted to do more, do more. He was able to recruit some NHS students to help provide this math tutoring. 
And so over the summer here at Bates, we hosted roughly 20 students in grades five through eight. These students were identified by their teachers and the teachers also worked with our tutors to identify kind of core topics uh, that we know to be challenging in fifth through eighth grade. So Connor, as well as Marcus Keeler, Carlin Gramley, Olivia Kropchuk, Andrew Boydson, Lauren Hart, Lydia Bayer, and Armin Bayuk Bauskrilli provided tutoring for four days per week, five weeks over the summer for about 20 of our fifth through eighth graders. Uh, I had opportunity to check in a few times on them. They were having a ball. They having a great time getting ready for math. So, uh, you know, we often get to celebrate all the great things that occurred during the school year. We celebrate athletics, we celebrate the clubs and the groups. I just want to celebrate some of the academic achievements that our students have been working on over the summer. Thank you all for let me share that. Thanks. Um, we have our first opportunity for public participation now. Each speaker is allotted a maximum of five minutes for a total of approximately 30 minutes, unless otherwise notified. At this point in the meeting, those interested in making a public comment will be asked to raise their hands so the time may be divided. Each speaker will be asked to announce their name and district of residence and indicate if they represent any organization or agency. No person may speak more than once on the same subject during a school meeting, nor yield their time to another speaker. The board does not respond to comments during a meeting. Those wishes wishing to receive a personal response from the board or superintendent must complete a public comment form available at the meeting's entrance and on our website. Anyone to speak tonight? Seeing no one, we will move on to our administrative and board updates. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like our, 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 our hiring at Kate is first. Yeah, so um, we uh, have built all of our teacher positions for one. Um, we have a specific plan for that. We don't think on Tuesday. We're still hiring bus drivers, G staff, FNM staff, paraeducators, Jenkins staff, and lunch monitors. So anybody would like a job, we have them for you. Um, and teachers who chose to speak, we have them this week. We just go and walk to the And it's on the field facilities project update. Hello, everyone. How's everyone tonight? Um, projects, 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 it's always <laughs> pushed, so everything is coming right down to the end of how um, we're making it all work. So, uh, projects movement, it is the high school is the flurry of activity right now as we're finishing things up. They're bringing in furniture today to the media center, so people are at the glass, like, looking in. I mean, it, it's nice. So, they're finishing it all up. Um, it looks really good. So, that'll be ready, set, ready to go for the students um, as they make that all work. Teachers are noticing the benches in the hallways. I'm excited to see how they get used, right? In small groups and stuff, how students and staff use them will be nice. Um, doors and hardware, we have a few color things we're fixing and getting those out and changed. Um, Creekside, the windows were all changed. They're finishing the sills tomorrow. Um, so that's all set. They're gonna match a few color things to take care of um, that are there. Let's see, fire suppression's all set, check. That's all good to go, take care of, it's all working. Um, Solar panels are great. We had DT out today. They did a final check the other day. There's a couple things they noticed that are wrong and need to get fixed. So they were working with Nova. So I actually met the gentleman from CT today to get the final things to get that all set to give it the official. It's on and providing power. So um, that part, which will be great when it's finally done, to make that all, it's all set. For um, we do have Mill Creek right now. We do have a temporary children um, for that for DT. We did find out DT is finally coming to move our line. We've been waiting for them um, for their group. So. DT works in gas and power. So I was like, I'm the electric guy, like I don't touch gas, try to get all the gas guys. So, um, but they are coming Thursday to move the line, but we do have a temporary unit that's going to keep Mill Creek um, running, keep it cool. It's not as big as needed. So the temperature is probably 78, 80, instead of like down to 72, 74. We'd like them, especially, of course, last week would have been great, right? But it's in the mid 70s now, it's, of course, it's getting hot. So hopefully when school starts, it'll be set. Cool. Cool. We're still working on getting it done. So they are the pushback right now. Um, we're they're getting the pumps in because, like I think I said before, we have to have the underground pumps working before we can drain it and reground it. So it might be a little bit later. So I was getting the final word today to let the athletic director, coach, and all know kind of where we sit. Where we stand. So that's one I wish I had better news on of where we were. What? Current estimate. Um, it's probably first week of October. 
which is three weeks after the last time. Um, so it, it's not ideal. We're just trying to get it done, get it done right. Um, one of the other projects we have going on for us is the cranes they all read. So they have half the lights all changed out, um, done with the new ones on up. Um, they know we have the first home football game. They also have a night game uh, Wednesday and Thursday as well. So to try and get to make sure we want lights on, we want lights safe. So to make sure we're taking care of all that work. Um, same thing with the top units of Creekside, Mill Creek, um, not Mill Creek, Creekside and Wiley, make sure all sets, uh, everything's working. Same thing with our building automation systems. Those are up and trying to get the final thing to get those online for Wiley. Uh, Creekside helps with efficiencies. Um, saving money. So, projects are rolling, things are good. Um, two big projects are looking well, better than they were. So, you can see the senior center that's rolling, so that's doing great. So, um, we're looking good on that. Too. Questions? What's the date on the senior center? That's I believe that is before January 1. I just get that question a lot, and that's what I always say. But, I don't know. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully they keep going the cruise, but out there working every day. So yeah. I'm hoping they keep that on our We got our new Silverado today. We've been waiting for that. So we finally have one of our new trucks. So that came in today. So I can check something out. So, but that way we don't have the party rubble car out there. We can keep it around. <laughs> Um, oh, we have the future fund update. Oh, yeah. So, my future fund is a wonderful program through uh, the WIC. So, Washington County is running that fund. What it does is they have, as they started last year, it's first grade through seventh graders. Everybody's entitled to $25. What the my future fund is, is they want to help families and students um, start planning for the future, right? So, it's whether it's university, whether it's uh, technical school, something afterwards. So, everybody, all you have to do is give them their email. They will take you, sign you up, sign your child up. So you'll have $25 in that fund right now. They're already growing and getting bigger because it's countywide. Uh, it's a model that's been used in San Francisco, Minneapolis, all over the country. There was a big endowment that came in. Um, if you are a student qualified for free and reduced lunch, you get an additional $475. So you get up to $500 to grow. So those accounts, I think, are already up to uh, those that signed up last year, already over $550. Right? So, so there was a big endowment Yes, in Washington County. They'll help that keep it going. So they have, I think, over 45, I'm trying to think of the form, but I got it. I think over $45,000 has been claimed already. Um, there's another 70,000 out there. I might have the numbers flip. Do I have flip backwards. backwards? So we've already claimed $70,000. There's another $45,000 that doctors students can claim um, for this. We are top of county. We have already 48%, I think, of our people have done it and signed up. Other districts are at 9%, 12%. They just, it's not getting out there. So um, Hope's been great with communication teams about getting out, our building principles of getting out to our families. It's it's free money and sitting out there. Um, if you don't go to um, a university, technical school, someplace, it goes back into the um, fund. It's how it all works. So uh, it, it's a great thing. It's great. But like I said, it's free to our kids. It's very easy to sign up. You can opt out too. You don't have to. Um, it's one of those you can't add to. That's a, that's a tricky one, right? It's, a, it's an account that's set aside different. Hopefully, as the money grows in the endowment, if that's where the advantage is. Mark? Um, you said that uh, the free, those who qualify for free and reduced lunch, now that Michigan wants free lunch, is that a separate thing that families have to sign up for? That would be different, yes. We still have, even with free and reduced lunch, we ask families to fill out forms okay. um, just because it helps us keep track of those two of our food for our food nutrition department. So you'll be seeing a big push for us to have families fill those up anyhow. Even though it is, but yeah, it qualifies based on income and people in your house. Yeah. So it's great. Tell everybody about it. It's good that Dexter, we're just going to keep going and getting it out there. Um, work with our secretary and administrators. Hope's already put it out once to family. So hopefully we just get in front of them. Hopefully they said. Thank you. I don't have any updates today, so our student representatives are next. Um, on last Friday, I had a student with a question. So I told the students question. And then I know tomorrow we'll have a student for being able to have a school bash along with their organization. 
um, sports, I'm sorry, I don't know sports have already had some games going. Um, I don't know if this also match is going, so I think sports are pretty good. All sports. Yeah, sports, uh, no cross country. We ran our first race on Friday. Um, I ended up running barefoot. It's a long story, but I'm okay. Um, there was a little bit of gravel though, which I thought was kind of funny, but um, no, it's been great. We have our next race for so it's been exciting. Uh, got our first football game on Friday though. Uh, that's cool. We're going to try one this week. It's a little bit of a drive, but it'll be fun. Um, just get to see what's going back in the season. Um, we have one last week in the day of summer. It's really hot out. I mean, <laughs> I'm wondering where all this heat came from. It, is, it makes it sad. It's kind of cool. No, uh, these last few months, it's kind of cool. Um, Yeah, we have one last week in discussion items. Um, the first one is a board candidate forum. Um, and I want to just sort of put out there. And first of all, I see all the candidates in the audience. So I'm just going to throw out there that I'd love to speak with you all after the meeting because I was having a little trouble getting a hold of people. Um, but I have talked to Dr. Timmis. I have talked to our student representatives about putting on a forum like was done for the last election. Um, where our student representatives will actually ask the questions of a panel. We do have a bank of questions that were put together from that, which were um, pulled together from our community. And I believe we have a bank of questions so that we can like, you know, put together a new, a, a new package of questions. Um, and since our tennis is not available, I offered to moderate. So that is what we were thinking. If you guys have other ideas or other Things that you would want to sort of add to it or just different data you can think about. And that's what we need to discuss with the candidate. So, um, but the hope was in September before the STP ballots come out. And since none of us are actively running, so we might like two or three weeks. Yeah. Okay. That was the thought. When did the absentee ballots come out? I think the end of September. I didn't, I didn't have the exact date. So, any thoughts or ideas? I think that it's been done the last couple of times by the district. So oh, yeah, we've done it. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Do you do the voting? Dozens. I don't know. I don't know. I think we did a virtual thing. We were in the three Yeah, yeah, we did a virtual thing. Which was worse. We were like 200. We were behind you. That was the job. Oh, yeah. The other one was Yeah, there were like literally hundreds. There were a lot. Like a thousand people watching. So you got more hot than I put out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to get that out. Did you watch that out? There were like, literally a cost of thousands, I swear. But, uh, at the very least, it's been done on a couple of election cycles, so this would be carrying on that. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll just put out here. Okay, so while we think about that, Let's move on to the year-end financial report. Um, we, our packet includes a memo and the 23-24 year-end summary financial reports from CFO Speedy. And Ms. Speedy will present the year-end results. And so I think that's my mayor. Um, so no results are true results until the audit is presented. We all know that, right? Um, so just a little caveat. Um, this is the same packet that you've received over the years. So we, we maintain the standard um, here for Dexter. Um, this does not contain the August state aid adjustment. 
So that's the one piece that would be missing um, from here. And we still have not reconciled between auditors and uh, the district as well. So the timing of presenting, preparing the report, presenting it um, to hope to get it to you guys in the packet, but when the state aid for August comes in, these things overlap. So we did just get it. I am expecting to make an adjustment uh, to the positive for the district. So um, we will get that analyzed and posted. Um, so it just, these are very reliable results. However, they're still moving parts. So that's just the, the one thing I'd like to highlight. Okay. Any questions for me? Okay. Is, there, is there anything else you would want us to point that you would want no, us to do? Uh, no, I mean, this was maybe, you know, no, this is, this is fantastic. Uh, this is a great, little packet. Um, this is different than what I've done in the past for other districts. You know, generally speaking, you rely on the audit report as our final results. Uh, this goes into another level of detail. Um, I was very happy with it. Um, hopefully it's great information for you guys. It did force me to analyze a few different areas as well. Uh, so hopefully this is good for you and we can continue this each year. Right. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're, yeah. we're used to getting yeah. these sort of things updated. So yeah. it's easier for us to follow. Perfect. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. We come to our second opportunity for public participation. Um, at this point, speakers are allotted three minutes. Is there anyone who would like to speak to board? And we are moving on to board comments. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? Well, Dick and I attended our last first <laughs> open day, open day uh, as, as board members, of course. Um, so it was great to um, see the, uh, the excitement of the teachers um, in the uh, center, high school uh, auditorium. So that was exciting to see everybody, and um, it was really safe to walk out. And then you know, we got out of control with those decisions, but it was great. Ryan did a great um, presentation, and um, he showed a very funny video clip, which I think that everybody really enjoyed. Um, I also got to see a little bit of uh, Ryan as a, a early elementary principal, and uh, so that was fun. Um, yeah, so it was great. The new buyers did you get? Uh, the packet. Oh, the packet total. It was hard to follow because the whole people. Trend, people were changing positions, and so it's, it's quite amazing to see the number. The folks that are doing something different or doing it here, but we hired 15 new staff in addition to the professionals. all professionals. Uh, we have information items in our packet. We have the back to school wayfinder, which I would just like to like shout out our communications team because this is an amazing document and I hope all parents read all of it and I think in our elementary schools we should have like every page just like <laughs> put in the seriously maybe in every school just for parents walking into the halls because I don't know that people always open the attachments and pay enough attention and this is like well, such as a gap please I mean how many times have parents I mean, like we was an advocate on the oh my god yeah, uh, yeah. And I'll say the other thing is in my role as a family lawyer, I'm looking for school information, starts and stops days. There are so many websites and schools that don't have that. And so this is really helpful. That's true. So yes. we're huge fans and like anywhere you want to plaster it, I'm a fan. Um, <laughs> and then the My Future Fund flyer, thank you for including that. And thank you for letting us know that the information already went out to families. That's great. Um, so we appreciate the teaching channel. Okay, we don't have any closed sessions, so we can adjourn and proper time to remember.